Praise God. Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Well, I believe the presence of God is in the house today. Amen. He has never failed to meet us here. You know, um, I remember some of the stories of the Old Testament where Moses would lead the children of Israel out of bondage and he brought them into the desert and he built a tabernacle. And after he built the tabernacle, scripture teaches us that the glory of God filled the tabernacle. I think there, Dad, it was called the Shekinah glory that would come and fill the, the, the most holy place. And Moses would go in to that place and he would sit in the glory of God. And God would speak to him from that place. He would speak to him from the glory. And that's very much what I feel today. I feel that the glory of God is in the tabernacle. And, and I believe that God wants to speak to us from this place. Because it's a place of peace. Um, and I, I believe that uh, we can hear the things of God in that place. It takes away the distractions of the world, is what I believe. Uh, I believe he wants to talk to us as a family, as, a, as a, just a church house. You know, those that are here and those that are online, he wants to talk to us as a family. So, uh, Trick, we say, uh, uh, we're glad you're back. And uh, we know that um, you had the um, calling from God to go and be with the family. We know we say goodbye to your grandson, Joshua, in this, in this realm. But um, God is doing extraordinary things in your family. And um, praise God that I'm sure you're, you're grateful that he uses you and sends you. But you're on our hearts always, Trick. Your family is at this time and, and all the things he's doing. So, um, you know, God bless you. We're glad you're back. Mm. Uh, Randy and, and, and Brother Tiger Lou, we thank you for your faithfulness. You guys are, 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 you know, you guys are faithful men and you have never failed us. So thank you for your goodness. Uh -huh. uh, we're glad that the, the uh, Pattersons are back. Um, <laughs> God bless you guys. So, uh, all right. That's all right. So you, uh, you walked where Jesus walked from what I understand. <laughs> all right. You walked where Jesus walked. That had to be extraordinary, huh? Uh-huh. Um, Thank you. you brought us, they brought us a gift from the Holy Land. It's anointing oil. So precious. I put it right here on the altar. Man. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you guys. I believe God wants to speak to each and every one of us today. I believe he sees us. He hears us. Gary, I'm thinking about you and all the things that God's doing with your music and how you um, uh, stay united with us. God bless you with that. Praise God. Everybody in the family. I believe that God sees us, hears us. I believe he's doing extraordinary things in our lives. Uh, you can call them trials and tribulations, but <laughs> we can call them extraordinary things. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, I believe that God wants to speak to us about his glory. I believe he wants to speak to us from that place. I'm thinking about our, our elder Nicole Freeman, Sister Nicole. She's online. She's home recovering. She uh, had a procedure, and she's fine. She's, she is recovering, though. And when, when she had the procedure, we went up to her room and we visited her afterwards. And it was extensive. It was a couple hours long, and then she'll probably be healing for several weeks. But as we were in her room and before we left, she wanted to acknowledge the goodness of God. She wanted to acknowledge the glory of God and the presence of God, how the glory of God, sometimes it visits and sometimes we feel it leave, but sometimes it abides. Do you ever experience the abiding presence of God? Yes. Have you ever had the presence of God and you prayed that he would not leave? I have many times, you know, I say, God, we feel and know your glory and we say, stay a while. And then we try to be still not to upset <laughs> the presence, if you will. But I find that as of late, the presence of God is more abiding. And that's why today we want to talk about the glory of God. While we were in that room, Sister Nicole acknowledged that the glory of God never left her. You know how you go through certain things in life and it can produce anxieties. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We're human beings. We'll always have anxieties and weaknesses as part of it. I don't think that ever goes away. It's, it's part of being human. But um, we also experience the goodness of God and the glory of God. And that was acknowledged. And as she acknowledged that in, in her room, I recall leaving her that night and went going into the hallway. And it's like I could still see the glory of God in the hallway. 
And then we went down the elevator, walked across the hospital, went into the parking lot, and I could feel the glory of God fill the whole atmosphere. Amen. As if the earth was filled with the glory of the Lord. Yes. Now we know that scripture tells us the earth is filled with the glory of God. Amen. Sometimes we see it, perhaps most of the times we don't. But there's Something that God wants to speak. He wants to speak to us in regard to the glory of God. You know, in our conversation today, you can call it uh, an end time message. And I would like to call it an end time message to perhaps get us to rethink what an end time message is. Because we like the end time messages to be doom. And we like the end time messages to be the wicked get, get their due. Not us, for crying out loud. No, we're going to heaven. Yeah, but let the wicked get their due. <laughs> well, that's, that's God's honest truth. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's immature thinking, of course. And we're waiting for the end times. Usually I find it's the older folks who believe that the end times are coming because they live their life and they don't really care about the grandchildren. <laughs> they live theirs and God's coming, it's over, sorry. <laughs> but you know that every generation has thought that God was coming in their lifetime, so... Yeah, good luck to the elders in the house. <laughs> it seems like every generation feels like the other generation is the most evil. Our generation feels the same. We could rise up and we could say it's evil in the world. It's the worst the world has ever been. They've been saying that since the beginning of time. Just so you know. First family on earth, Cain killed Abel. I'm sure Adam said to Eve, it's evil. I'm sure he's coming back soon. <laughs> Don't get much worse than that. Times of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm sure they could have looked out and said, the world has never been so dark. He's coming back soon. And then we would say today, the same message, the same tired things we say. Why? I don't know, maybe we don't see the glory so much. Maybe we don't recognize that, yes, there may be evil in this world, but isn't the glory of God greater than it all? Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a few people saying amen, but isn't the glory of God greater than it all? And hasn't the glory of God always been greater than it all since the beginning of time? And I know sometimes we get tired and frustrated, so we're ready to give up and say, that's it, that's the last straw, as if God's saying that's the last straw. He ain't saying it's the last straw. You're saying it's the last straw. Uh-huh. But what about the glory of God? What about the glory of God? Because since God created this world, he filled it with his glory, and he has not taken it, away, taken it away. God created the earth, he created the world, he created you, he created me, and thank God he's never changed his mind. It is good, and the glory of the Lord fills it. You know, before I even proceed, I wonder sometimes, why is it that we think that this world and this earth is such a failure? How is it? That you can look out into this world and see nothing but evil and think God's coming back because it's so bad. Doesn't anybody see the glory of God? Does anybody see a beautiful world? Well. Does anybody see beauty that's all around? And if you don't, just look a little higher and look into the heavens because the heavens declare the glory of God. Yes. You know very well if you can't find it on earth and you look to the sky. Yes. And you'll find majesty in the sun that rises every morning. Sometimes the majesty is so great you want to go out and you want to look at the colors. Sometimes I, I wake up in the morning, I don't see much of a sunrise, but sometimes that sunrise is so beautiful. And I want to go out of my way just to stare and look for a minute. The heavens declare the glory of God, shouldn't we? Amen. Sometimes at night, the skies are so beautiful, the sunsets are so beautiful. I heard some of you say just recently, I forget who it was, that you looked into the night sky and you saw the moon and the stars. And how beautiful it was and how beautiful it is. Yes. So isn't the world beautiful? The heavens declare, uh -huh. shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? Shouldn't we declare how beautiful this world is? Shouldn't we declare how beautiful the children of God are? The greatest thing God created was mankind on the last day and he said, behold, it is very good. Shouldn't we do the same? Shouldn't we find the beauty in each other? Amen. Or can we not get past what we would consider to be the evil? Amen, everybody. 
I believe it's time to behold the glory of God. I believe that God is going to open up our eyes. You know, the greatest thing that God's going to change in this world is not this world, but me, but you, right? He's going to change how I think and how I see and how I live. You too. And one day you're going to wake up and then perhaps you'll, you'll look out and you'll say, you know, this world is a beautiful place. Amen. It is filled with beauty. Why is it sometimes that it's the Christians or the religious folks that can't see the beauty? Because all we see is hell and damnation and waiting, we're waiting for God to come back with fire. And sometimes it's the non-religious people that see beauty, that travel the world and climb the mountains and go to the rivers and the lakes and see the majesty of it all. Because they just want to take it in and enjoy it. Sometimes they got it right. <laughs> For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen. What about the glory of God? I think we see the, wrong, the world wrong. And unless God tells us that, unless we hear it perhaps even from a platform like this, we won't rethink how we see the world. Because I would say myself, even this morning as I was preparing this message, I began to see the world differently. And I know sometimes we're quick to say that the world is filled with evil and it's nothing but corruption. Uh-huh. And all men are liars. And sometimes these words flow out of our mouth without an ounce of care, an ounce of love, an ounce of understanding. Can I get a witness from somebody in the house? Yes. We're quick to say the world is corrupt and going to hell and all men are liars. Excuse me. Well, then we're gonna God's going to have to shut our mouths and just let the heavens do the talking then because we're talking the wrong thing. Amen. For the heavens will declare the glory of God if we do not. And I believe that God gave me and I believe God gave us a gift where we need to look at this world differently. And yes, there are things in this world that we don't understand, that we don't like, but this world, it always has been. There's always been a mix in this world. But let us not deny the glory. The, the world is a beautiful place. God created this world. It is absolutely beautiful. And you cannot say anything less to them as people of God. If you are a believer in God Almighty, you cannot say that this world is not beautiful. Amen. And you cannot say that the earth is not filled with glory. And you cannot say that there are not beautiful people all around and every person has a certain beauty inside of them. And let's start to enjoy this life. Man, half our Christian's life, we can't, we can't even enjoy this life because we think nothing but this wickedness. And then, we, and then we get to a point where we say, oh, he's coming back soon. I cannot tell you how many conversations I have had, perhaps you as well, with folks, Christian folks, who say he's coming back soon. It's so evil out there. And I'm tempted to believe that. But then I say no. No. The world is not full of evil. It's full of glory. Amen. And we have to see it first. And I know he's opening up our eyes. I know he's changing you and he's changing me. Can I get a witness from somebody? Amen. And we have to stop saying these wrong things and stop seeing and believing. And, enjoy, and you know what? And, and enjoy the beauty. If, if you deny it, you can't enjoy it. Amen. Your life is a hard life if you can't enjoy the beauty. My life is hard when I don't see the beauty. My life is hard. Isn't yours? It's hard when I don't see the glory. It's hard. But maybe this life is beautiful and there's something here for us. We're only on this earth for a short time. It'd be a shame if you didn't get to enjoy it. It'd be a shame if you didn't get to see the beauty that's all around you, what God created. God thought it was so great when he was finished. And we, we contradict him. We say, well... <laughs> Uh huh. Let him speak to us from this glory. I was reminded of, I'm going to give you a couple of stories here. You remember Habakkuk? Habakkuk was a man who lived 3,000 years ago. And he said, what I, I just had a conversation with a gentleman uh, this week. And he said the same thing. He said, the rapture's coming, God's coming, all this old kind of talk. It's old kind of talk. Because it's so evil. And, um, and I think we as Christians must say, no, we believe in glory and we believe in redemption. We believe in glory and redemption, and that's why we're on this earth. Habakkuk had the same conversation. You remember Habakkuk had two complaints? His first complaint, Habakkuk chapter 1, I'll read a couple of verses. 2 to 4, it says this, it says, How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Violence, I cry, but you do not come to save. Must I forever see this sin and misery all around me? My goodness, this is the conversation I had with this gentleman last week. <laughs> he had the same conversation 3,000 years ago. Huh. Interesting. Wherever I look, I see destructions. This, these are my thoughts sometimes. I see nothing but corruption and, and, and liars, and, but I'm not seeing correctly. 
I am not beholding the glory of God. I am not seeing God. For I see sin and I see destruction and violence. I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. As if we're the only good people on earth. If we're surrounded by such evildoers, what, are we the only righteous people on earth? Well, excuse me. As if we're the only ones doing right. And you know darn well, you ain't doing right. <laughs> You're doing the same stinking things. Yeah. But for the grace of God. But for the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So Habakkuk says, I'm surrounded by those who love to argue and fight. Listen, you got nothing but fight in you all day long. Who oh, are you kidding? Okay. For the law has become paralyzed and useless. Same words we speak today. There is no justice given in the courts. The wicked far outnumber the righteous and justice is perverted with bribes and trickery. That's our conversation today. We think the courts are so bad and the politicians are so bad and the wickedness is so great. You could have this conversation from the day of creation up until now. You could have the same thing. It all depends what you see and what you're looking at. It depends what you're looking at. And all he could see was that. All he could see was wickedness and brokenness. All he could see was destruction all around him. And then we, we, we generalize and we call all men liars and, and, and evil is everywhere. And that's not true. Because just a little bit further down, God would say to Habakkuk in his complaint. You know what he says is where we got our, 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 our verse for today. God says, for the time will come, the time will come when all the earth will be filled. As the waters fill the sea with the awareness of the glory of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The glory of the Lord has always filled this earth. Yes. Always will fill this earth. Yes. But we're not aware of it. Amen. Sometimes we are. You get that moment in time. You ever get that moment in time? We just talked about it. Where you see a little glory, you feel a little glory. You see a little God. And then you beseech the, the God in heaven that, that he would not leave so soon. Amen. As if he's leaving it all. But he's not. The earth is always filled with the glory of the Lord. And Habakkuk in his complaint, God says, the time will come where you will see and you will become aware of the glory of God that fills this earth. And I believe that God is speaking to us saying, you will become aware that the glory of God fills the earth. It fills this room. It fills the streets. It fills your homes. It fills your family. And it will change everything. Yeah. It will change everything. And I believe God's changing the way we think, what we believe, what we speak. I say that for myself, and you'll have to say that for yourself also. I'm reminded of the same story in Isaiah. Do you remember the story in Isaiah? You guys remember when God called Isaiah? In the year King Uzziah died. Remember that, Pop? In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated upon the throne high and lifted up. And the train of his robe had filled the temple, right? In the year King Uzziah died. Uh-huh. And it says that the seraphim came. Remember, he said the seraphim came. He saw a vision of God, a vision of glory. Remember, we talked about those living creatures, the great fiery seraphim. He saw them and, and, and they came and they cried out to one another. And they cried out, holy, 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 Lord God almighty. The whole earth is filled with the glory of the Lord. He said that they said the same thing. The message is the same. The glory has never changed. The glory has never left the earth. But Isaiah is living in a time where he himself would look out to the earth and not see the glory of God. He just had a moment of glory like you and I get. But prior to that, all he was saying was there's evil and wickedness all around us. And he would say, woe is me and woe are you and woe to you and woe to everybody out there. Such is our conversation. Until the year King Uzziah died, I believe something inside of us has to die. I believe the way we think has to die. I believe what we, the way we see has to die. I believe what we believe has to die. Uh -huh. And when there's a death, there's a new birth, there's a rebirth. And, 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 and he, said, he said, in the year he died, I saw this glory. Let me read a, a verse or two here. It says, um, chapter 6, it says in 3, it says, One cried to another, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. 
The whole earth is filled with his glory. It says uh, that the posts of the doors were shaken and the voice of him who cried out and the house was filled with smoke. Have you ever seen or experienced a, a church house or your house, um, the glory of God? Because it looks as if smoke is in the room. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Have you experienced the glory of God? Because yes. I think you have and you don't know it sometimes. The glory of God looks like there's a light smoke in the room. Amen. And sometimes when you acknowledge that, uh, by acknowledging the glory of God, it increases because you become more aware and sensitive to it. And here, here Isaiah said, what well, he experienced all these years ago, what we experience now. And he said that he saw that there was smoke that filled the earth was filled with the glory, but he said there was smoke that filled. But then he said this, he said, he said, woe is me for I am undone. When he saw the glory of God, he said, woe is me for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Amen. Because just prior to this, he was talking about nothing but the negative. He talked nothing about the evil in the world, but he was, and it was in a religious tone because he said, Jesus is coming back. If he spoke our language, he would say, Jesus is coming back. Look at the evil all around. Jesus is coming back. And I say it's the wrong message. Because all you see is evil and no one's declaring glory. Uh -huh. Isaiah talked about the evil. God corrected him. He said, talk about the glory. Habakkuk saw the evil. God corrected him. He said, talk about the glory. And I would say today, God would speak to us and say, stop talking about the evil. And talk about the glory. Amen. Talk about the glory. He said, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips and everybody around me has unclean lips. And yeah. therefore God told the seraphim, he said, go take a coal. From the, lip, from, the, from, the, from the altar and, and touch his lips. And I pray today, my God, even as we speak and are in your presence, that you, my God, would take that coal and touch our lips. Uh -huh. And let it purge away, my God, how we think. Let it purge how we speak. And may we be the ones upon the earth that do not declare the evil. I pray. I pray that God would take a coal and touch your lips. And that you would not declare the evil that is in this world. But I pray that you would declare the glory of God that's in this world. Yes. From this day forward, I pray that God would open up our eyes and see that the whole earth is filled with the glory of God. Amen. And declare it. Why should the heavens outshout us? We are the greater creation than the sun and the moon and the stars. He created flesh and blood. Why should they take our job from us? Let us be the, the brightest light in the room. <laughs> Let us be the ones that declare the glory of God. I pray that God opens up our eyes and we see this world differently. Now, I know that we're not in agreement with institutions and we want to declare the rottenness of institutions. Listen, all institutions have good. It's just there's a mix. There's a good. I mean, the hospitals are good. Governments are good. We need them. There'd be nothing but lawlessness and death without them. Yes. But all we want to see is the brokenness of the systems. But there's God in them. And greater than that, there's people in those systems. Children of God. And I know we talk about people that we don't know. We talk about people on the TV, famous people. But if you know them, if you sat and talked to them, I bet you'd love them. I bet you would love them. I bet you would see the goodness that's in their life and in their hearts. I bet you they love their children and they love their family. I bet you that they want to do good. Although in our, in our distantness, we, we declare them as evil, doing evil. But I bet if you had lunch with them, if you knew them, if they were your brother or your sister or your family member, I think you'd speak differently. I don't care if you agree or not, because that's the truth. That's the truth. Amen. Amen. And there's good in all people. Yes. Because God created them. Yeah. So 
Isaiah would say the same thing. But God would take a coal and he would touch his, his lips. Mm -hmm. And then he would start to speak something differently. And at that time, it says that's when God called Isaiah into ministry. Now God could use him because now he could see the glory of God. And then you know that, that, that Isaiah, he was the one that, that preached about the coming Messiah. You know, that Christ is coming. Emmanuel, God with us. Perhaps he saw it in the glory. <laughs> and then he had something good to say. Amen, everybody. Amen. Yeah, it's very true. Psalm 24, it says this. It says, the earth is the Lord's. You know it? Yes. And all of its fullness, the fullness thereof. The world and those who dwell therein. Ha. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen. Amen. The world and all those who dwell in. I might say that God loves the world. He say it's filled with goodness. It's filled with, with good people. But all too often I disagree with him. And I do believe from this day forward God will open up our eyes and change the way we think and change the way we speak. Can I get an amen? Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? That is right, everybody. How dare we disagree with the Lord of heaven? Because if we disagree, the heavens will shout louder. Amen. They will shout louder and say, no, no, no. There's nothing but beauty here. Amen, everybody. So it goes on to say in this 24th Psalm, it says, he has founded it upon the seas. He's quite pleased with himself. <laughs> and established it upon the waters. The oceans are beautiful. The skies are beautiful. The mountains are beautiful. It says, who may ascend? Listen to this now. Who may ascend? And don't, don't come to conclusion. Throw away your old thinking. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. Stop right there. So who is this person? <laughs> Now, I know it's easy to say, ah, oh, the world is full of those evil people. They cannot ascend to the heavens. They're not going to heaven. But I must say, if we're going to judge in that, in that realm, I don't make it either. I know you agree with me and you think that you're going to make it. <laughs> but I don't make it either. And I say, as the people of God, as the ones that we believe we've given our lives to God, we love him. But according to certain definitions and understandings of the Bible with our old thoughts, I would say this. I would say, I don't have clean hands. No. And I don't have a pure heart. Nope. And the reverend's agreeing with me way, way too fast. <laughs> no, you don't, brother. No, you don't. <laughs> Never heard you agree so loud. No, I'm just <laughs> and who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. Really? God sees something good in all of humankind. Yes. And he's talking about not the outward me, if you will, but he's saying there's something good inside of me. The same as there's something good inside of all that has the opportunity to experience the glory of heaven. Amen. And it's right here on earth, everybody. Who may ascend to that place? It's really, it's an invitation to all. It's an invitation to none, or it's an invitation to all. Amen. And it says that he shall receive the blessing of the Lord. And so on and so forth. So the earth is filled, my God, with all the, with good stuff. How about Psalm 19? I'm going to read maybe, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight words. Psalm 19 says this. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Stop. The heavens declare the glory of God. Ever since creation, the heavens declare the glory of God. Shouldn't we? Amen. Shouldn't we? Yes. Amen. Amen. And if anything less comes out of our mouth, may God touch us and purge it and purify it. And may we see the glory of God that is all around us. Praise the Lord. You know, I was going to look at Matthew 24 because in Matthew 24, it talks about the end of the world that we all talk about. God is coming back, the rapture, so on and so forth. Um... 
signs of the times and the end of the age. When Jesus was talking to his disciples, he was on Mount Olives, and he said to the disciples, he said, the disciples would ask him, tell us when these things shall be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and what will be the end of the age, what would be the end of the world? And Jesus told them the end of the world. He said, and Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that, that nobody deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And maybe these are the things that trouble us. Maybe, maybe you look at the news and you hear about all these, these wars and this evil. Perhaps we, we hear about more evil today is because we have more areas of information than they did. You know, there, I, I, would, I would argue that, that the ancient world was more cruel than ours. I would argue that the ancient world had more wars than we had. My goodness, look at Rome. Rome. Rome conquered and fought everybody. The Greeks, my goodness, on and on, right? I would, I would have to say that the wars were greater in ancient history. Greater. But somehow we watch the news and we think that they're the greatest right now. And therefore, therefore it must be the end of the world. I don't know. I don't know, maybe it's just part of life. Because where do these wars come from? Where do these wars come from? Yeah, that's right. You read the book of James. Where do these wars come from? They come from within you. They come from within our own hearts, wanting for things and not being able to get them, lusting after things and, and not quite getting the things that we desire. They come from within us. And therefore, the wars that God wants to bring to an end is not the war outside of you. No. Yeah, it's the war within. And I know, I know we need visuals, and I know we are absolutely carnal people, so we'll look over to Russia and Ukraine, and we'll declare righteousness and unrighteousness. We'll declare wickedness and the rottenness of war, yet we got no problem with the war in our heart. I got no problem with me raging against you. Now, that, that's acceptable. I'm going to ascend to the holy place. <laughs> But those rotten Russians and those Ukrainians, I don't know what sides you're on. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's just a manifestation of the war that's in your heart. You want the Russian war to end? Let God bring peace in your heart and my heart. Amen, everybody. So God says there will be wars and rumors of wars. There'll be pestilence. There'll be violence and famine and so on and so forth. Right? Yes, it's right there in Matthew. Uh-huh. There'll be prophets and false prophets, and they will deceive many. There will be lawlessness. The lawlessness will abound. We say, oh, my goodness, lawlessness that abounds. The greatest lawlessness is, is in our own heart. When we don't follow the things of God, we don't follow the glory of God, the goodness of God. We don't, we don't declare what is right and true, I believe. It says the love of many will grow cold. When you love the world, the love of many grow cold. But it says, he who endures to the end. Let, let, let me say this, the end time message. But he who endures to the end. Do you guys know the passage? It says, he shall be saved. For it says, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to the nations. And then the end will come. You see, the end of it all is that the gospel is preached. The end of it all is that the glory of God is declared. For the, the heavens declare the glory of God. It's the end of all things. The end of all things is the end of the way, my goodness, we live our lives. The end of, the, of all things is the way, if, if God in his great power and sovereignty could cause us to change the way we think, could cause us to change what we believe, could cause us to change how we see. Only God in his sovereignty can, can cause us to leave this place a changed person. I dare say that most of us leave the church house not even remembering what was said. We'll leave the church house and we'll be the same thinkers and the same doers. We'll keep our same religion. God forbid we allow him to change our religion, to change our doctrine, to change our belief system. Well, something has to change. Something has to change. Why not you? You want the world to change the way they believe. You want them to change their religion and their doctrine. But God forbid you change yours. What? You got it all right? <laughs> God forbid. God forbid. 
I believe that God is opening up our eyes. He wants us to see the glory of God that is all around us. You know, it's real simple. It's real simple, everybody. We've given a real simple mandate from heaven. And it's, it's right there in Romans. It says, be not overcome by evil. You guys know the verse? You probably know it well. Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. How about that? So is the world full of evil and Jesus coming back? I don't know. This says here, be not overcome with evil. If you see evil in the world, then you have a duty. What is your duty? Mm -hmm. Okay, listen to the mumble. <laughs> your, evil, your, your, your duty is to overcome evil with good. It is not to speak of the evil and speak damnation to the evildoers. Because you can speak damnation to the evildoers, but please look in the mirror first. Look in the mirror first. Uh -huh. Or we can overcome evil with good. Amen. Stop declaring. Stop declaring and stop agreeing that the world is filled with evil. As the people of God, let us stop declaring the evil of the world and let us start declaring the glory of God. May it never come out of our lips. May it not enter our thoughts. May we not think about it anymore. Amen. But may we, may we in turn, may we overcome evil with good. Amen, everybody. And I'm going to leave you. In case you don't know how to do that, I'm going to give you like three, four, five points. All right? <laughs> that might help you overcome evil with good. It's in Romans. You read Romans chapter 12. It's in that, it's in that passage there. Very simply, it says, man, I'm, I'm, I, I close with this, so let me, let me read through this. Paul was pleading to, to the ch church, the children of God, and he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I beseech you that I plead with you that you give your bodies to God and let them be a living sacrifice. What do you do with your bodies? Let them be a living sacrifice. Let them be holy and acceptable. And when you think of what and when you think of what he has done, is this too much to ask of all of the goodness that God has given us? Is it too much to 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 give our bodies as a living sacrifice? And then I love this, 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 this um, translation here. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of the world. But I would also say, don't, 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 don't copy the behaviors of the religious world also. But be a new and different person with a fresh newness in the way you think and what you do. And may you learn from your experiences. Okay, here's the list. You ready? How do you overcome evil with good? You ready, everybody? Don't pretend that you love others really love them. Sometimes I think we put so much effort into pretending that we love them. <laughs> Just change, change your heart and really love them. That's how you overcome evil with good. Hate what is wrong. Still hate what is wrong, everybody. Okay? Don't be confused. Hate what is wrong. All right? Stand on the side of good. All right? But it says, love each other with brotherly affection. Take delight in honoring each other. We're too busy living our lives and building our kingdoms and our success. We don't know what this is. This gospel, we don't know nothing about the gospel. We don't know nothing about the gospel. All we know is how to better ourselves, how to be accomplished in this world, how to be successful and rich uh, and influence others. That's right. How, we, we, we very rarely take time out, out of our day to honor someone else rather than get, get our own profit and get what we want. Because we want what we want when we want it. And that's where the wars come from. From within our own hearts that, that can't get the lusts and our desires. But if we give them up for each other, if we actually love each other and stop pretending to love each other, loving each other means we lay down our lives for each other. And we say, yeah, I'll lay down my life for you. No, you won't. Doesn't mean take a bullet. Doesn't mean take a bullet. Because what's all off the, oh, I'll take a bullet. I'd rather die than do what you want me to do. <laughs> I'd rather die than take a bullet than me to pretend that you're right and, I, and I'm wrong. <laughs> than me to lay down my desire for your desire, for me to lay down my schedule and my agenda, what I wanted to do today for you. I just wanted to sleep in and do absolutely nothing. Most of the times, I want to do nothing. It's not like I have a list of things to do. I, we all do, but I, I really rather do nothing. But to actually love someone is to, to step out of that laziness and, 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 and engage in somebody's life. Man, that is so really rare. Yes. That is so really rare that we visit someone or help someone or, or find out their need and fulfill it. It's so really rare. Uh -huh. 
we, we live this life and it's not the gospel. I'm, by and large, it is not the gospel. Amen. It says, don't, this, I like this one, don't be lazy in your work, but serve the Lord enthusiastically. But I would say that laziness pertains to us working with and for each other. Let's not be lazy in our hearts towards each other. It says, be glad for all God is planning for you. Be patient in trouble and prayerful always. How about that? Amen. That's how you overcome evil with good. Uh -huh. Be mindful, be prayerful always, everybody. When God's children are in need, I love this. I really love this translation. Not when God's, humankind, anybody. When anybody is in need, why don't you be the one to help them out? Why don't you want to be the one? Why don't you be the anxious one looking for the need? You, you, you ever, you, you ever, you ever, I'm sure you have fulfilled that sometimes. You're the anxious one. You see that there's some trouble stirring and you're, you're just right on the cusp of things waiting to engage. See how I can help in this situation. Why don't you be the ones eager to help? As if that's what your day was destined to be. Amen. Amen. Why don't you get in the habit of entertaining strangers? And I know we say we live in a day and age and we have, I don't know, cause the word of God to be of no effect because we think it's, it's the right thing not to entertain strangers. Listen, I'm just talking about people that you bump into all the time. People that you walk by and ignore. We don't even say good morning. How many, I mean, this is true of us all, right? I mean, we, we can walk by a hundred people and not say good morning to anybody. Well, I don't know them. Because you didn't introduce yourself. <laughs> you say good morning. I bet you, that's the beginning of getting to know someone. You say good morning. You say hello. How are you? I believe God wants us to connect. Don't you? Don't you believe that? It says entertain strangers. What does that mean? It says be engaged. Make friends of everybody all around. It's not just the business of the day. I'm here for business. I'm only business. No, you're not. Who lied to you? You have turned my father's house into a house of business. Your life is not about business. You are not an effective business person. That is a lie. And you have forgotten who you are. You are the house of God. And, you have not, and then God says, do not turn the house into a place of business. But we think that's the, and, and that's our mind, guys. That's our, our human life. We think it's about a business and being effective and productive. That's the lie. We've converted the house of God into something it should not be. We're about touching people. Entertaining strangers, helping others, loving. That's the purpose we, why we live and breathe. And he'll give us a job to go to do to it, and then we get lost in the job. No, you're there to touch everybody in that job. Whether your numbers tank or not, it's not really the important thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, anyway. All right. If somebody mistreats you, what do you do? It says, don't curse them. Pray for that person. Bless those who curse you, right? When others are happy, be happy for them. When others are sad, share in their sorrow. Work happily together. Don't try to act big. Don't try to get into the good graces of important people. But enjoy the company of ordinary folks. How about that? And don't think that you know it all. I'm, I'm, that's not my opinion. I'm, I am reading scripture. <laughs> And I love that. We, we miss out on life. He says, just enjoy the people. We can't even enjoy the people around us. We're so, our minds are about business and things that have to be done and the brokenness and the evil. We can't even just calmly sit down and enjoy the people all around us. Enjoy the ordinary people. You don't mind if I call you ordinary, do you? <laughs> How dare you call me ordinary? <laughs> ah, you're extraordinary too. And life passes us by. And God says, is the world filled with evil? Then overcome evil with good. Uh-huh. Never pay back evil for evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see that you are honest and that you are honest and, and, clear, and clear through. Don't quarrel with anyone. Be at peace with everyone when possible. Amen, everybody. Amen. And it goes on to say this. It says... It says, dear friends, never avenge yourselves. Leave that for God. For he has said that he will repay those who deserve it. Yes. And I know in our twisted thinking, we want God to get him. God's going to get him, but not how you want him to get him. <laughs> he's going to get him. You know what he's going to do when he gets him? You know what he's going to do when he gets him? Yeah, that's right, brother. Aren't you sorry that you gave it to God? He's only going to save him and love him. God, get him. Yeah, he's going to convert them and save their soul. Mm-hmm. We're not ready for that yet. 
<laughs> he says, instead, he said, feed your enemy if he is hungry. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. And it goes on to say, this is how you will heap coals of fire on his head. And in our natural thinking, we're like, yeah, let him burn, let him burn. It's not what it's saying. <laughs> it's not what it's saying. It's saying you'll change the person that they are. And you'll convert them. Amen. And that's what it's saying. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's what it's saying. What he's saying here is, this is how you overcome evil with good yes. you say the world is filled with evil okay if you cannot see the glory yet then overcome evil with good that's the answer amen, amen everybody amen. I pray this day that God will change how we see the world And how we see the people of the world. I pray that God would take a coal and touch our lips. Now this is a real big one. But I pray we would stop speaking the things that we speak. I pray that we would stop talking about the evil in the world. And I pray we would stop talking about all the evil people. We talk about our presidents as if we have the right Whichever one you like and don't like. We, 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 we call our presidents idiots. Our politicians corrupt and evil. As if there's no good in them at all. We declare how evil and wicked the people are. Because we expect them to receive the judgments of God. I pray they do receive the judgments of God. I pray that they get out of your hands. And into God's hands. Because God's going to redeem them. God's going to save them. God's going to love them because you can't right now. But I pray. I pray. And with that, I pray for the blessing for you. I pray the blessing of God for us all, really. And I pray that you start to enjoy this beautiful world that God gave us. Amen. You're only here a short time. Why don't you leave the stuff that you don't know about to God? Amen. Leave the judgments to God. Leave heaven and hell to God. Yes. Why don't you enjoy this beautiful world that he created? Right. Why don't you agree with him in all of creation that the earth is beautiful and the glory of God fills it? I want to enjoy it and enjoy people and declare it. And if, if evil comes my way, then I shall be eager to overcome evil with good. Amen, everybody? Amen. All right, the word of the Lord. God bless you. Why don't you stand and uh, trick Randy Tigerloo. Praise God. All right. I'm going to say a simple prayer for us all. I'm going to pray that God opens up our eyes and lets us see. As I pray this prayer, if you want it, I, I ask with your words, with your lips, even under your breath, if you must, just say, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your presence in the house today. Yes. And we do declare in the house of the righteous yes. that the earth is filled with the glory of God. Yes. We declare it, O oh God. We speak it with our mouth. Yes. I pray, my God, as we leave this house, I pray, my God, for those here and those online, that you open up our eyes and let us see your glory. Yes. I pray, my God, tonight... When we prepare for bed, that, that we, our eyes would be opened and we would see the glory of God that's all around us. I pray, my God, when we wake up in the morning, that we'd open up our eyes and look into the sky and see the glory of God that fills the earth. I pray, my God, we learn to see and know your presence. I pray, my God, that we see flashes of light, O oh God. The light, my Lord God, that overcomes all things. I pray, my God, open up our eyes and let us see the glory of God that is all around us. And therefore, we shall declare the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody says, amen. amen.